Hello once again. So this is going to be a talk on anemia of chronic disease, which is so, 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 so common. Around 6 to 10% of patients that are hospitalized, adult patients, have anemia of chronic disease. So you better know this one. So anemia of chronic disease, you've got anemic symptoms, of course, because it's called anemia. Weakness, fatigue, malaise, pallor, in conjunction with a low or normal MCV. So this can be a normocytic anemia or it can be a microcytic anemia. If it's microcytic, it's usually going to hover around 80 because it's not so much of a microcytic anemia as much as it's a normocytic anemia. But I did include it in the microcytic part because sometimes it presents as a microcytic anemia. So it should be on the differential. But anemia of chronic disease is often a normocytic anemia. So it's going to be less than 100 uh, femtoliters. Uh, so anemia of chronic disease is associated with chronic inflammation. And this is going to result in three key events. So first, it's going to result in increased levels of hepcidin. We didn't know about this protein until about 13 years ago. And what hepcidin does is it turns off the absorption of iron into the bloodstream. It actually reduces the expression of a protein, a channel protein called ferroportin, but that's not necessarily no for the USMLE. No, that anemia of chronic disease increases levels of hepcidin, and hepcidin reduces iron absorption. Increased levels of apoferritin. What is apoferritin? Apoferritin is the precursor to ferritin, and ferritin holds iron. It holds iron in the cells and it hogs it away from what could become hemoglobin. So if you have increased ferritin, it's going to glom up all the iron and you're going to get decreased production of heme. Remember, heme is uh, protoporphyrin 9 plus iron and then that becomes heme. And then heme combines with globin and becomes hemoglobin. So if you don't got iron, you can't get hemoglobin. And then finally, decreased erythropoiesis. And this is done via multiple inflammatory meters. So you actually have a decrease in your red blood cell production in addition, in addition to your uh, decrease in hemoglobin production. So the overall result is going to be a normocytic or slightly microcytic anemia with no deficiency of iron. And that's important. You're not going to have a decrease in your stores of iron. You're not going to have decreased ferritin. And, and, and that's, that's paramount here because if you had decreased ferritin and decreased serum iron, you would have iron deficiency anemia, the number one cause of anemia. But when you have, when you have uh, normal or increased ferritin and normal serum iron, that is associated with anemia of chronic disease. And of course, it's common that patients with anemia of chronic disease have some kind of chronic disease. Lupus, uh, cancer, um, rheumatoid arthritis, anything that causes a chronic inflammatory state. The overall goal is to, with anemia of chronic disease, and yes, there is a goal with anemia of chronic disease, it is an adaptive response to one degree or another, is to keep iron away from bacteria. Back when we were first evolving, the things that primarily caused inflammation were bacteria. Things like E. coli, Klebsiella, and those bacteria metabolize on iron. And so it made sense for the body to keep, when we didn't have antibiotics, for the body to keep those bacteria from growing, it made sense to keep the iron away from that, those bacteria that thrived on it. So the way we adapted was to have this, this process of anemia of chronic disease where we increase our apoferritin, increase the ferritin, reduce the amount of iron in the serum, and therefore uh, keeping uh, less, having less iron in the serum and less iron metabolized by the bacteria and hopefully to starve off the bacteria. Whether or not that works, who knows, but basically anemia of chronic disease is a uh, is, is uh, the result of that process. And anemia is really a side effect of this process. 
evolution didn't intend to keep the iron away from hemoglobin. It intended to keep the iron away from bacteria. But you get anemia because you're increasing your ferritin, and ferritin hogs iron and prevents the production of hemoglobin. So that's basically what happens. But remember, increased levels of hepcidin decreases absorption, increased levels of ferritin, which hogs the iron away from heme, and decreased erythropoiesis. Okay, here's a picture. This is just showing everything that I told you. So you get hepcidin, which decreases the absorption of iron, and then iron, you're going to have less iron in the serum because you get decreased absorption of iron. The iron that you do have is going to get stored up really quickly as ferritin. Why? Because we have increased apoferritin, which is an acute phase reactant, just like hepcidin. Since you have more apoferritin, you're going to have a lot, lot, lots of ferritin. And so unlike in iron deficiency anemia, you're going to have a perfectly high ferritin, normal ferritin or high ferritin. Now, because you don't have the iron, as much of the iron, and more of it's going to apoferritin to make ferritin, you don't have iron to go in to make heme, you're going to have a low hemoglobin. So this process, which normally should happen, doesn't happen so much. And you have a, de a, a reduction in transferrin just because you don't have uh, that much iron. So you don't need to, you don't need to hold transferrin. Uh, sorry, you don't need to hold iron with transferrin as much because you have less iron in the bloodstream. Transferrin, primarily what it is, transferrin, TIBC, it goes up when you have iron deficiency because it's trying to find iron. Uh, it, uh, it's trying to find iron, as much iron as, as you can. So associate a high transferrin with iron deficiency anemia. Whereas ferritin is something totally different. Don't confuse the two. It's easy to confuse the two because they both have F-E-R-R-I-N in it. Okay. Ferritin is the iron hog. Transferrin looks for iron. Okay, so uh, just comparing and contrasting iron deficiency anemia to anemia of chronic disease, it's pretty much the opposite. Uh, serum iron can be normal in anemia of chronic disease, whereas it's always low in iron deficiency anemia. Uh, but the serum ferritin is going to be high in anemia of chronic disease. Why? Apoferritin is an acute phase reactant. Iron deficiency anemia, you have low ferritin because you don't have enough iron to combine with apoferritin to make ferritin. So it's going to be low ferritin. With TIBC, you increase your transferrin to look for iron. Uh, with anemia of chronic disease, uh, you're not doing that. So it's a low TIBC. Okay, anemia of chronic disease. Diagnosis, uh, you've got uh, a MCV. In, uh, it's generally going to be normal or slightly low. So just because you have a low MCV with uh, a, an anemia does not mean that you have iron deficiency anemia. You always have to rule out anemia of chronic disease, but it tends to be that uh, anemia of chronic disease is a normocytic anemia. It's the most common cause of normocytic anemia. There's other causes of normocytic anemia, blood loss, um, I suppose all of the uh, hemolytic anemias, and uh, rarely uh, pure red, red blood cell aphasia, uh, aplasia rather, uh, those can all cause normocytic anemias, but uh, anemia of chronic disease tends to be the most common that you'll see. Uh, your iron studies will reflect high ferritin, as mentioned, this distinguishes it from anemia. Now, reticulocytes should be low in anemia of chronic disease. Why? Because inflammatory mediators are suppressing hematopoiesis. So if you have an elevated reticulocytes, that's, and reticulocytes tend to be normal range varies from lab to lab, tends to be about 1.5 to 2, 1.5 to 2.5, 1 to 2.5, somewhere in that range. If it's below 1, it's always low. If it's above 2.5, it's always high. Elevated reticulocytes are inconsistent with anemia of chronic disease. That tends to reflect more blood loss. If you lose your blood, you're going to, yes, be making more reticulocytes because your bone marrow uh, gets the message that you need more red blood cells, so you're going to make more reticulocytes. Whereas in an anemia of chronic disease, it's the reticulocyte formation is turned off by the inflammatory mediators. 
Also, hemolytic anemia, same thing. You don't have inflammation going on, so you're not turning off your reticulocyte formation. So elevated reticulocytes, inconsistent with anemia of chronic disease, you should think blood loss or hemolytic anemia. If there are other cytopenias, so if you have a neutropenia, if you have a thrombocytopenia, that may not be an anemia of chronic disease. Yes, your, uh, your blood cell production is shut off by the, or turned down by the inflammatory mediators, but they really should not cause a blunt uh, clinical or uh, a, an actual low range uh, thrombocytopenia or a low range uh, 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 white blood cell count. You shouldn't get that with anemia of chronic disease. It's not gonna shut those cells off that much. So if you have pancytopenia, you should probably think of maybe getting a bone marrow biopsy because pancytopenia is a bad sign and you don't want to risk that. So anemia of chronic disease tends to be just limited to the red blood cells. Okay, the focus of therapy is going to be tailored towards the underlying cause. Supplemental B12 and folate are good. That will aid in the creation of red blood cells because as we uh, treat the chronic disease, then we're going to turn on red blood cell formation and the inflammatory mediators are going to go away as we treat the inflammatory disease, uh, likely with steroids. And so uh, when, when those inflammatory mediators are gone, then your blood, cell, your blood marrow is going to say, okay, I need to start making red blood cells now pronto. And B12 and folate are going to be very critical in making red blood cells. So supplemental B12 and folate are going to be good for that. Please note that in diseases that affect the kidney, so chronic kidney disease, a major factor of their low red blood cell count uh, can be decreased erythropoietin. And this can mimic anemia of chronic disease. But if a patient has chronic kidney disease, they may benefit from erythropoietin analogs. Now that doesn't mean don't treat their underlying chronic kidney disease, but patients with chronic kidney disease, a lot of times they have low erythropoietin too. And so giving them uh, some added erythropoietin in, uh, in the form of analogs can help uh, with, their, uh, with their anemia. So patients with chronic kidney disease consider erythropoietin analogs.